Hey everybody, it's Marvina. I wanted to welcome you to my angel Q&A today. So in today's video, we're continuing the discussion about the chakras and how to best go about clearing them and activating them. And so today we're going to go over the base, sacral, and the navel chakras. I'm also going to be taking some questions and especially those regarding your spiritual growth. So for the first thing that I would like for you to do is just post in the comments and just let me know where you're tuning in from. I like to uh, connect to each other across time and space this way because it's a great way for us to establish a circle. Even though we're not in the physical, it helps us to connect across time and space. So let me know where you're coming in from. I'm here in uh, North Texas, uh, not too far from Dallas, Texas. And uh, also create a heart intention for our circle today. You can light a candle, you can burn some incense if you like, and uh, create an intention for what you would most like to get out of this angel Q&A and post your intention in the comments as well. And just trust that you're in the right place, you're in um, a safe place to receive information that can help you to move forward on your soul's path. We would also especially like to connect to the Archangel realm and to the Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Hope in particular because these are the archangels that help to oversee a mankind's awakening of the base, navel, and the sacral chakras. So send out a prayer and a request that those archangels be present with you and that they sort of give you the heads up if there are some certain things that you might need to do, some action to take, some sort of prayers or ceremony or whatever type of spiritual practice that can help you to fully activate and energize and wake up your chakras. I really believe that the angels have a great way to get together and bring forward information and ideas and uh, answers to your questions especially for those of you that have a really clear intention and a clear and pure desire to know more about your spiritual development. So even when I might be um, answering another person's question, just listen to it. And if you have things that are important for you to know uh, regarding your spiritual awakening, you will be surprised that sometimes the angels are talking to one person, but they're also talking to you. So just remember intention and a pure desire to know more and to move forward on your soul's highest path, plan, and purpose. So create your intention for today. Post it in the comments. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for hopping on. I love to see the hearts and all of the people uh, coming in. It, it makes me very, very happy. The angels have been really lively in this room today. Uh, we've already had some orbs and just some really cute little um, orbs floating around. So uh, I hope that they um, have some more show up too. So, um, so today we're going to start with the base chakra and um, back in the day when humankind first um, was seated or star seated here on planet Earth, we had a fully operational 12 chakra system and a 12 strand DNA. And this allowed us to have access to the divine all of the time, we could connect to one another. We had access to all sorts of um, cool things that we don't have when we have our seven chakras. But what happened is that we misused our power 
in those lifetimes, in the Atlantean times, the Lemurian times, and we misused our will. And so the Holy Spirit decided that we had to kind of go back to the basics and uh, start all over and we needed a huge purification. And that's why we had uh, to go through the ice age. And so the ice age was like a purification. And after that, when humans were born, they were only born with the seven chakras. But over time, we have finally started to uh, demonstrate uh, more integrity on a collective level. And we have access to the beginnings of opening up our higher chakras and being able to activate them so that we have the use, the access to the gifts that they um, that they hold. So especially with the base chakra and the navel and the sacred chakras, for those of you that are experiencing poor health or a lot of anxiety or trouble with the reproductive organs or the stomach, the liver, uh, the spleen, you want to particularly pay attention to these chakras and make some efforts to get them more energized and cleared and do whatever needs to be done to purify those chakras so that they're spinning properly. So a chakra is like a energy vortex. And whenever it's spinning properly, it helps to pull out of the universe whatever it is that you need to not just survive, but to thrive and to create and to interact with one another, to interact here on this earth plane in a beauty way and to be in a position to create magnificently. But when those chakras are blocked and they get blocked by different things that happen in our life and how we uh, react to those situations and they sort of collect uh, debris or and after they collect a lot of stuff that hasn't been purified or cleared from those chakra centers, then the chakras can become um, it's like their energy shuts down and then the organs in our physical body that correspond to those chakras, they don't have access to life force energy. So they begin to uh, shut down too. So that's whenever we experience disease and a sluggish system, uh, we might feel high anxiety, uh, have a hard time functioning here in this lifetime. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong when our chakras are shut down. So it is hugely worth our time to, um, to pay attention to these systems. And I know from a lot of my messages that I get that there's quite a few of you that are experiencing high anxiety, that you have some really poor health a lot of uh, concerns over health. And also there's some of you that have been writing me a lot about having a hard time making a living, getting a job, keeping a job, and uh, being able to just cover the basic needs. So this is an area, all of these areas are dealing with our lower chakras. So you really want to um, pay attention and uh, ask your angels to really highlight um, any of the information that you particularly can make use of and uh, that can be relevant to you. So our base chakra has two petals and petals are like chambers. And within the chambers, they have uh, like ideas or challenges that it's important for us to to really integrate those ideas in our day-to-day -day life and to overcome those challenges. So in our, our base chakra, they, since it just has the two petals, that they have to do with us being able to balance 
the divine masculine and the divine feminine and to really integrate those qualities in a beauty way within our day-to-day -day life and how we go about our business. So the divine feminine is the idea of receiving energy, of holding a sacred space, of holding our dreams. The divine masculine is the action energy. It is the energy that helps us to get up, to get things done, to uh, make things happen in our life. We need the balance of both of them in order for us to really be vibrantly happy and creative and grounded and to also feel secure here in this dimension. And for uh, my friends on here that have a lot of anxiety issues, when you're very balanced uh, within your masculine and feminine aspects, it helps us to ground and to feel safe and to feel secure in our physical body and to trust our higher self to help us to navigate this entire uh, physical journey. And so that's whenever we, we feel at peace and we don't feel so like a fish out of water. So those things are really important, but they're easy for us to, um, to kind of remedy. The way that uh, they can be spun out, out of balance or that they can be blocked is for people that might have either witnessed uh, uh, like um, any type of sexual abuse or experienced it themselves. And if you haven't been able to properly uh, get perspective or, or heal over those events and um, maybe forgive whoever hurt you or sometimes we even have to forgive ourselves for um, like not knowing better or not making better choices or whatever the issue is if we're holding on to um, pain in those areas or to judgment or um, we have unfinished business there, then we're not going to be balanced within the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And so we will feel uh, ungrounded. We will have a lot of fear and not be able to um, uh, feel at home or feel comfortable. We won't have a uh, access to our systems the way that we need to have and eventually we will experience poor health or possibly disease if we don't take care of that business. So this is a good reason for us to make sure that we are working our personal pieces. And that means engaging with the past with anybody that has hurt you on any level, whether it's hurt you physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, spiritually, or soul sexually. We want to work our personal pieces and do our forgiveness work. Uh, there are many, many different modalities that can help us to kind of highlight uh, what is left undone, where we're holding on to a grudge, where we're holding on to anger or hate or any negative emotion. So any negative emotion eventually will um, will cause our downfall. So we want to make sure that we're doing our best to engage with things that um, are, are um, blocking our chakra system. So we call that working our personal pieces. And you can ask your angels to just give you some heads up and um, they won't give us too much at once. So they're probably not going to give you like an A to Z list of people, events, situations, things that um, you need to work on. Usually they'll just gently float across your mind one or two ideas. And if you are to engage with those ideas, then that will help you to um, get into a better energetic state so that those chakras are more clear and they're spinning appropriately. So meditations are a great, 
a great way to do that. Just sit down, ask your angels to work with you, to inspire you on what needs to happen. It can be as simple as that. So the intention to heal and uh, the desire and um, that purity of intention and desire, they just um, create a really nice uh, energetic that allows your angels to work with you, especially if you have an open mind and an open heart. So I want to encourage you all to just make sure that you're not um, allowing maybe old ways of uh, belief systems or survival philosophies or other image makers or teachers to um, make it hard for you to integrate some, some life skills that can be uh, really life-changing for you. A lot of times we, um, we just allow other people to think for us for several reasons, uh, we may think that they're smarter than us. We might believe that uh, for some reason they have more grace with God or they have more uh, wherewithal. And so we give our power away to like a belief system, a religious um, uh, system or teachers or our parents or our grandparents. and it's so important in order for us to have the most powerful journey here possible that we get used to thinking for ourselves and taking action for ourselves, come what may the good bad or ugly and uh, we learn that way and we also over time begin to empower ourselves that way and we create a relationship with our own angelic crew. And whenever we move forward and we make gains in life, we know that we've done them, we've done it ourselves, And um, that is so important. And it, um, in the long run, it's like we've established a, um, a higher foundation. So the, um, before I go on to the sacral chakra and the chambers in the sacral chakra, the, um, for the, the whole world, the base chakra is in China. And so the, whenever people go to China and if you have issues with your base chakra, this is a, a place that helps us to, um, kind of on a global level, purify the energy of planet Earth and the base chakra. And we can also go there by our intention. And so in our dreams at night, if we uh, just create the intention to go to the uh, etheric retreats in China, where they work with healing, they work with rejuvenation and repairing um, any of the, the damage to our luminous cocoon. Our angels can help us to travel there while we're asleep and we can um, gain some insight about our own base chakra and what we might could do to uh, further heal there or further activate that and get it very grounded and purified in this dimension. The um, sacral chakra for uh, the earth is in Honolulu. And so you can go to Hawaii and this is a great place to really purify the sacral chakra and heal and get some clarity and maybe some ideas from the kahunas there in the spirit world or the angels that can help you kind of uh, take that to a whole different level. And then for the navel chakra, it's in Mount Shasta, California, and the color is a really beautiful, vibrant orange whenever it's spinning properly. So that would be a place that you can request that your angels would uh, help you to connect to the etheric retreats in Mount Shasta and to the masters and the angels and the archangels, and they can help you to 
uh, get some ideas about spiritual practices, maybe some chanting, uh, some different types of uh, moving meditations that could be particularly important for you. So I wanted to go over those and then, um, so I'm kind of uh, tight for time, but in the sacral chakra, you have 16 chambers. And so each chamber offers a challenge. And sometimes it is, um, it might take us a little bit to really um, think about the challenge within that chamber and to what we want to do is make sure that we are living our life in a beauty way so that how we integrate with that idea in that chamber that we're not hurting ourselves and we're not hurting anybody else. So um, there's 16 chambers in the sacral chakra. I've got my notes here because there's too many for me to remember when I get caught up in the lights here. But the first one is about our sexuality. So we just uh, want to think about how we run our energy uh, regarding our sexuality and make sure that we're not um, using it as a tool uh, to maybe uh, manipulate anybody like uh, partners or lovers. Um, the second chamber is about powerlessness, uh, impotence. The third chamber is emotional need. The fourth chamber is self-love. The fifth chamber, chamber is um, sensational-based sexuality. The sixth chamber is to offer, do we offer too much emotional comfort or um, are we very cold natured? The seventh chamber is the idea of smother love. Uh, those that are important to us, do we want to smother them with uh, too much affection? The eighth chamber is from insecurity uh, to using our sexuality. The ninth chamber is mutual caring. The 10th chamber is tenderness. The 11th chamber is offering love. The 12th chamber is giving love. The 13th chamber is sharing love. The 14th chamber is transcendental sexuality and love. The 15th chamber is procreation to bring a child into this dimension. And the 16th chamber is the idea of going through a pregnancy and carrying a baby with love uh, into this dimension. So those are the ideas. And um, so we want to just go over those and see you know, which one of those pieces we might um, be running our energy um, backwards or not in a good way and um, take some steps to um, heal that part of ourself and to integrate some different ways that we can engage with that challenge and to over in order for us to be able to overcome uh, that challenge. So our sacral uh, chakra is it represents our sensuality, our sexuality, but also our creativity and how we're able to manifest and to put ourselves out in the world and to create in a really big way. And I know that I have quite a few on here that um, are really struggling to create. And I know it's kind of weird where you tie in our sexuality with our creativity. But when you think about it, uh, what is, a, there is no more powerful creation than being able to create another uh, human being, to be able to create a baby is one of the highest acts of creativity and high magic that we can do. But we want to be able to create a living for ourselves as well. And so that's another aspect of our sacral chakra. So we really want to make sure that we're very mindful about all of these ideas that are uh, withheld in the sacral chakra chambers and that we are 
using our energy properly. We're not abusing our power and we're not using our sexuality to manipulate um, someone else, like our spouse, especially, or our children. So in our navel chakra, when this area is balanced, it's a beautiful orangey yellow color, and we radiate sincerity whenever it is vibrant and it's engaged properly and all of the chambers are activated and they're pure and we're very high, highly creative whenever we're operating from this. Uh, the navel chakra also has uh, 16 uh, chambers and each chamber offers an idea or a challenge. So the first chamber in the navel chakra is the idea of isolation. The second is withdrawal. The third is aloofness. The fourth one is very tight boundaries. The fifth chakra is inability to receive energy. The sixth chamber is friendliness. The seventh chakra or the seventh uh, chamber is reaching out and being very welcoming. The eighth chamber or um, idea within that is warmth and caring. The ninth challenge is being able to serve others. The 10th challenge is seeing the best or seeing the beauty, the kindness in other people. The 11th one is social ability. The 12th is family and how we're able to uh, create family and um, and do that in a beauty way. The 13th one is community and being able to be a blessing and give back to our community. The fourth one is being inclusive. The 15th one is um, community. The 16th one is unconditional guidance and support. And uh, the 33rd challenge is combined with the sacral and the navel, the 16 in each of those is 32. And then together uh, you get the 33rd idea. And that is the gift of clarisentience and being able to um, receive from others uh, with clarity. So those are the different ideas that um, that are withheld within these chambers and the different challenges for us to be able to overcome in order that we can properly uh, activate and energize and align our base, our sacral and our navel chakras. And so when they are, when they're healed, when they're purified and they're, they're active, they are able to send out feelers into the universe to be able to connect to each other, to other people, to ideas, uh, to ground those ideas and ground our creativity into this dimension. There's so many different things that we have access to when we can ground our chakras in this dimension, we are much more able to manifest prosperity and abundance. We have a better ability to take our ideas and all of the things that we have in our imagination, all of that creativity, and be able to um, make it into the physical, ground it into our physical day-to-day -day lives, like make things happen. And another huge benefit that um, I feel is so important for a lot of you that are having uh, health problems and anxiety issues is that when those chakras are clear and we've done, we've worked our personal pieces, we've done our soul clearing, we've done all of the healing and engaged with the past that we're able to activate the earth star chakra and tap into the 
energy of the earth. And you will know when you are tapped into that because when you walk outside barefoot, especially, you'll be able to feel the pulse of the earth. And it is it's really cool when you can, um, you can feel that energy and you can pull life force energy up from the core of the earth and through the ley lines, all of the ley lines, uh, they connect to places of power all over the world. Any idea or um, a piece of business that, that you are interested in or something a he like a healing idea that you need to know for yourself or even for someone else when you're able to tap into the lee lines you can pull resources from all over the world from the pyramids and all of the pyramids and the different portals of power and places of power all over uh, the world they have these huge bodies of information, and they're like libraries of information. And just by our birthright, we have a library card that we can access that information. However, the caveat is we have to, um, we have to have already demonstrated integrity and impeccability, and we have to be willing to be responsible for our actions, past, present, and future, and be willing to um, to do our personal work. And so we won't even get to those libraries until we've already demonstrated uh, those all of those positions. They all of the those things those boxes have to be checked off, and then it's like our library card to these magnificent uh, pyramids and beautiful uh, portals of power it's like it's there and we can use it and by our desire to know more we're able to uh, check out pdfs or information or books or uh, whatever um, ideas can help us to engage with whatever challenge uh, is on our mind, it, whether it's a piece of creativity that we want to um, work with or uh, it's a healing uh, kind of a paradigm, maybe a healing paradigm for somebody else that um, somebody that we love that is important to us. So we have access to those places, but it's like we have to um, we have to get our library card activated in order that we can um, that we can do that. Okay, so um, what else did I want to say? Oh, um, I have a question from Brandy. So um, she just says she's thinking about going back to school for her soul's dream at a Gateway University, and is this a part of her soul's path? So, uh, Brandy, there, you know, this whole earth is a gateway university. So, this entire dimension and planet earth is set up for us to be a university to activate our, um, our higher gifts and to challenge us and see how good we are at manifesting and creating. So one of my courses is called a self mastery boot camp, and that's like one of the most important things that we can do here is master ourselves. And I've had so many people that say, "I would love to meditate, but I just get bored." But you know what? By um, by creating the intention to meditate and engaging with it and just determining that I'm going to pursue this and do it a little bit at a time, like uh, clear your mind and focus on your breathing and give yourself like set your timer. I have um, my phone here for, for my timer so I can keep it within an hour, but set your timer on like three minutes and just uh, say to yourself for the next three minutes, I'm going to sit here 
and stare at my candle and just focus on breathing in and breathing out for just three minutes. And when we do that, it helps us to um, kind of build our, um, our muscle for being able to focus. And so the next day, it's like we set our timer for four minutes and we just focus on breathing in, breathing out, um, anytime that an idea comes to your mind or something uh, pops in, it's like just let it go and go back to the breath, go back to breathing in and the candle, breathing out. And after a while, you will find that you can still your mind for several minutes. And that is self-mastery. It's being able to tell yourself, I'm going to do this. Uh, whatever it is that you have determined is important to do. So after a while, we can build that muscle up. So there's many ways that you can learn to do this. So I think your school would be, uh, that would be one way. But just uh, realize that there are avenues for us to be able to engage with self-mastery and really kick it up a notch. And... Um, Whenever you, you um, study this material and what the different things that they offer, and if it feels exciting to you and it just makes your heart happy, that's how you know that that's something that's going to um, bring some value in your journey here. And um, just create that intention. Uh, really dial in on what's, what's really important for you and um, ask your angels to help you stay moving in the sweet spot of your soul's path and your highest purpose. And when we do that, that um, it's like things will line up for us to get the value out of whatever that school is or, or whatever they have to offer. So I feel good about it. But just know there's more ways than one. All right, so Elizabeth writes, um, what do I do with my angel letters after I write them? All right, so Elizabeth, um, so when you are um, writing a letter to the angels, and I go over this in my uh, angelic intensive program uh, in detail, uh, but um, a simple answer would be to, you can roll it up and tie a pretty ribbon around it that um, sort of harmonizes with that angelic spirit. And you could put it someplace in your house that feels special. Like if you have an angel that sits on uh, your, um, your desk or your dresser or an altar, that would be a perfect place to uh, put your, your prayer requests. They, all of the different um, angels and the archangels, the teaching angels, they all have a little bit of a different um, kind of like their area of expertise and their, um, their ways of interacting and of letting you know that uh, they are, are going to answer your prayer or they're going to, they're willing to work with you on whatever it is. They, they have a, <clears throat> a different timing and um, I'm going to get myself a drink here. Hold on a second. So it's best to, uh, to really read up on uh, the angel, the archangel, the different teaching angel and what you're particularly wanting to um, pray about or how you need them to help you. And because some of those, uh, the prayer requests or the petitions, they might, uh, like some of the angels, after you write your prayer request, then you would, um, you might burn it. And that is a way of releasing all of the the prayer it's like sending it out into the universe through the element of fire other uh, angels or archangels uh, after you write your prayer you might um, put it on your 
altar for seven days uh, and still others you might um, you might keep it for a month or for 30 days or for a year or indefinitely until the prayer was answered and some of them you might uh, bury uh, in a place of power so um, there are many ways that you could handle that um, that question but a simple one would be to just um, put it on your altar and um, depending on the angel that you're sending the prayer to it's like if you don't get a solid answer or a um, something change on that in a certain amount of time like a week or or two or three weeks 21 days or a month then you know that they are not going to be able to answer your prayer or to work with you on that you're gonna to have to find another way or you may have to find another way to ask that question but um, but what I would just suggest is putting it in a special place that uh, nobody else in the house really has has access to so um, I just think it, it's important that our prayers are um, private and um, anytime like any passerby or, or other people in the house have access to it it um, it dilutes the energy and it can uh, block the whole process so uh, but it that is a good question so Brenda writes, I don't uh, trust my inner voice. How do I know it is my angel? So um, yeah, that is a good question too, because um, a lot of people have um, issues from past religious teachings that, um, that if the preacher doesn't say it then it's not real and so um, what's happened is we just have to realize that over time that um, that uh, religious some not all but some religious leaders have made a, a huge play to take away our power and um, to cause distrust and to um, so that we go to them for ideas and for information instead of going directly to the Holy Spirit and directly to interacting with your own angel. So it's, um, it's been just a part of um, the mass conscious mind for a long time for dark force energies to uh, try to manipulate religious uh, leaders and um, distort the purity of, of uh, the religious teachings which they have done in a lot of circumstances so what you want to think about is um, is just uh, doing a lot of meditation and prayer work sometimes when we go through those like I call it the silent treatment, although it's really not a silent treatment. But when we feel like um, our angels are not, might maybe ignoring us. Uh, I don't really think they are ignoring us. But it's uh, the idea that um, that still waters run deep, and that while things might be quiet on the surface that there are things that are in motion and it might be just a time for you to really um, observe your uh, how you're running your energy what your goals are are they really in line with your highest um, blueprint and your um, sacred soul's dream or are they just distractions for the ego so we have to dial in like are we really is this something that is really valuable or am I just is my attention getting taken by you know some glittery object there and um, but it gives us time to maybe pray about it and see um, if we need to rethink why we do what we do and how we're going about uh, doing it and um, 
and also do some ceremonial work ask your angels to sit with you you might do some chanting there's a lot of different things that can help to kind of break up the energy in in the pathways and um, in the chakras that might have uh, debris in them for whatever reason that um, we can we can get debris in all of the different chakras if we are not living a life of right thoughts, right actions, and uh, right words. So like if we're not eating good or if we're drinking things that are not good for us, or if we're going off on some pity parties, then we can clog up those pathways so that our angels, they could be talking a mile a minute and because they're so clogged and blocked, we can't hear them. So doing some things to break up the energy can be very, very powerful and very useful to, uh, to you. And so um, I would meditate, I would do, make sure I'm doing some sort of movement meditation every day, like yoga is great, tai chi, uh, qigong, eurythmia, there's different types of movement, um, dances like um like the hula dance uh, belly dancing all of those moving kind of prayers and meditations they um there's a like a bird outside my window that's <laughs> um trying to get my attention but they can be really useful in helping you to um kind of dislodge the um the, whatever debris in the chakras so that you start to get some solid strings of ideas and, and of information. Another thing you want to think about is, is just realize that when your angels are talking to you normally, for most people, you're not just going to hear them like you're hearing my voice. They're just going to drift an idea just very ever so gently across your mind. So you have like a send out a thought and then the next thing you know, you just have an idea and it just sort of floats across your mind. They can answer us just that fast. The thing is, is that most of us just, um, we overthink it. We overthink our dialogue with our angels, our communications with them, and we just, blow it off and think, oh, I just made that up. I didn't really hear that, or that's not really my angels. Um, but that is um, another thing that you can do is if you um, are feeling really uh, strung out and that you, you have important things you need to go over with your angels is create a sacred circle with your angels. And uh, there are so many ways to do that, but um, one way is just to simply uh, create the intention to be surrounded with layers of protection and high vibrational light from the Holy Spirit. Ask the uh, Archangels Raphael, Mikael, Gabriel, Uriel to stand guard around you while you pray and then just ask that your most holy guardian angel sit within that circle and uh, to just kind of go over some ideas. And usually we can't take too much at once because it's just flat, not digestible. But um, if we get just one or two things that can help us to kind of break up the energy and move forward, then that's, uh, that's gonna be enough to start to turn things around. Another thing that we can do is um, to activate our chakras and to heal um, some of the pieces of business that um, might be distorted or cattywampus is to work with sacred geometry. And there are many different ways that we can use sacred geometry. Um, I have uh, the triketa earrings on, so it is, um, it's a, a sacred uh, geometry piece of uh, using um, the three circles. So it is very healing, very protective. 
You can use uh, necklaces that have sacred geometry. There's a lot of different symbols, uh, the Ohm symbol, and this is um, the, the Tricata, it's really pretty. Um, here's a, a bigger one. So you could put that in, um, in your office, in your bedroom, in your wherever you pray, in your meditation room, or just any place that feels powerful to you. And every time you see that, um, those images, it helps to trigger the codes that are dormant, that are in your cells and in your DNA. It helps to activate them and, um, and position you to be able to use that information or that, um, that knowledge. There's a lot of different, um, um, tons of different sacred geometry. The, the Metatron's cube is one that is my favorite right now. It is, it's an amazing, creative, powerful piece of geometry. A, um, the five-pointed star is a great one. The six-pointed star is another good one. The affinity loop, which is uh, like a figure eight, that one is, is very meaningful, but there are many different ones and you just have to find uh, which one, um, which one is um, going to work best for you. All right. So um, let me see, Sandy uh, Morris uh, writes that she doesn't feel like her angels are talking to her and that um, she's meditating, but it's not working. So that's a similar question to, uh, to what we just had. Just realize that um, uh, sometimes we have to change things up. So just uh, take stock of what you're doing right now in regards to your spiritual path and how, how you're doing what you're doing. And um, if you don't feel like it's working for you, then you have to do some things to uh, change it up and um, you have to do something different in order to get a different result. But um, I just went over, you know, several ways. Um, use some different prayer tools or some different visual images in your meditation. So this OM is a, this is a really good um, uh, image to work with when uh, you're doing your meditation, but there's a lot of different ones that you can use. So you just have to find something that um, just resonates to you and is meaningful to you and, and work with that idea. Hi, Savannah. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hi, Tiffany. Oh, hey, Cindy, how are you doing? So we have uh, several people on here. We're doing good here. It's a beautiful day in Texas. It's very cool. So that um, I did my whole yoga routine this morning outside, and I don't think I even broke a sweat. So it was it was like, I don't know, 70. So that's amazing. But I wanted to thank everybody that um, hopped on the call today and uh, if you enjoyed the video, please share it with somebody that you think could benefit from a connection with the angels. And just think about the different people on your friend list and maybe someone that you know is going through a challenging time and just ask them to uh, and just share and ask your angels to um, kind of use this as a blessing to them. All right. So, hi, Rachel. <laughs> so, I've been, I've had you on my mind a lot uh, lately. I just feel your husband in the spirit world is really wanting to connect with you and um, just give you a big hug from the spirit world. And I, I also feel like your, uh, your brother in the spirit world is wanting to be a blessing to you right now and to the family, to the kids. And uh, your husband says that um, sometimes um, you take too much on. So <laughs> um, I, I guess that's his idea that, um, that you're taking too much on or there are some pieces 
with the kids that um, are theirs to deal with that you may think that you have to um, solve their challenges. And, and he just says that uh, you just have to let them figure things out and that they're going to do fine, that, uh, that you worry a lot. <laughs> but he loves you. So just know he's there for you and, and uh, message me, okay, because I feel like there's, um, there's a, you know, a few more things. But I know he's around. So, um, so Laura, um, Martin Roberts, just, um, yeah, I could feel all of the, um, the sadness in your voice and, uh, across time and space. So just, uh, go over the different, uh, things that we offered in the video today and just pick and choose some of the things that resonate to you. But sometimes when, um, when we feel like we're at the bottom, we're in a perfect position to be able to pull ourselves back together and rebuild ourselves anew. And it, it has to do with engaging with um, our image makers and how we have been taught that we need to view the world and interact with others and uh, set our goals. And sometimes we have to really rethink our values. And I feel like um, there's, there's so much there that I really can't um, go over it in just a soundbite here on the video. But um, your angels are there for you uh, you are their only job. So you have a whole crew that um, are doing what they can to help you. But the biggest thing is they want you to understand that you are an aspect of the divine mind. So you have access to creation, to the Holy Spirit, and to all of that energy and all of that vast wherewithal within the Holy Spirit. But you have to... Um, you have to be willing to engage from it from a different perspective and um, from the I am place rather than um, from the little me place because it, it's like you just can't, you can't get there from, um, from any place of uh, where you, you might feel like a victim. You, you have to t really do some prayer work and uh, dial in and uh, rethink your attitude and approach to a, in a lot of different uh, relationships there so that uh, you can look at it from a different perspective because that's going to be your saving grace. But they are there for you. But you, I would just um, work from... Um, I think um, I might have talked to you before about working with the Abraham's Hicks material. They help you to really uh, look at things from a place of um, being mindful about how we're creating and creating from uh, the I am place rather than I want or please God give me or I'd like to have. Anytime when we are paying attention to the things that we don't want, we don't want the chaos, we don't want the negative people, we don't want the, um, the challenges, we are just manifesting a whole lot more of what we don't want. So you um, want to get into a different way of reframing it. And when you find yourself focused on the crap, uh, you have to use our self-mastery tools and go back to, um, well, and just look for little little places like, I like feeling supported. I like feeling loved. Focus on the things that you desire because our desire is very magnetic. It's very powerful. And it's that is like something that, you can send out that current into the universe and the universe can, they can give you that instead of the chaos and the sadness and the, 
the despair or the ill health, but it, it really challenges. And we came here to be challenged. We totally are up to being challenged. And we knew it would be hard when we came in and we agreed that we would uh, walk through the veils of amnesia and we would forget our connection to the God source energy and we would forget our, our I amness. And so now is the time for you to remember that and um, to just be very mindful that um, what we're living now is an illusion and you're not liking it. You want to re-script it, reframe it, and you just have to do it bit by bit. And um, But I think boundaries would be a good thing. The idea of just asking uh, for shields of protection around you and that your angels help, help to um, uh, kind of separate out uh, attachments to things that are not serving you anymore. Uh, that can be the most helpful. Uh, so, um, but anyhow, um, they're just telling me that my time is up and I hope that you all have enjoyed uh, the video today and, um, and just if you would share it with uh, people that you think could, um, could use some angelic inspiration or these ideas, I would really appreciate it. So have a great day and um, if you have questions for next week, I'm going to hop on. Uh, I'm planning on Thursday. So, um, so just send them to me, email them to me, and I'll see what I can get about them. So anyhow, thanks a lot. Have a powerful day. Bye, everybody. You all take care. Bye.